Okay. Max, if I could start with you. I mean, what is it about Goldman Sachs? How does he manage to, to turn the figures around like that? Well, Goldman Sachs are scum. I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, they basically have co-opted the uh, U.S. government. They've co-opted the Treasury Department, the Federal Reserve functionality. Uh, they've co-opted the Obama administration. Barack Obama, uh, you know, dances to Goldman Sachs' tune. And they are really crooked and abominable in what they've done. Uh, you just remember Hank Paulson held the Congress hostage, mm -hmm. took him in the back room and said, give us $700 billion, we're going to crash this market. Well, joining us for the rest of the hour, maybe twist his arm a little bit into the next, take some phone calls, is Max Kaiser. He's a former Wall Street broker and is the inventor of the virtual specialist technology, prediction markets, Hollywood Stock Exchange, a bunch of other uh, systems, and my private film. Max is currently a TV presenter, radio host, entrepreneur, broadcast journalist. He's the host of On the Edge with Max Kaiser on Press TV. He's also done a BBC show called The Oracle, blogger for The Huffington Post. Max also presented the films for Al Jazeera. He joins us from Paris, France. And uh, he's also uh, a little bit in the new Obama film that I will soon announce the name of by, I'll announce it by next Wednesday. I've got to quit procrastinating and uh, get to doing that. You just heard me play a clip of him on national main French television. We're going to play another clip of uh, something coming up at the bottom of the hour. This is your chance to have financial questions. We're going to clear the board of calls. Fresh calls specifically for Max Kaiser on the economy, on the police state. Uh, but, but Max, let me throw you a curveball before we get into Goldman Sachs and all this. Out uh -oh. of the gates here. Uh -oh. yeah. Curveball. It's Max all Kaiser right, curveball. Curve <laughs> it's a knuckleball. But, but uh, seriously, the flu situation, troops everywhere, mass graves. They denied it a year ago. Now they admit it. Forced inoculations, talks of lockdown. Only... Less than 2,000 dead worldwide. Uh, they are really hyping this thing, really trying to scare people. This looks like, to me, the perfect cover to get their carbon tax through, to get their open borders through, their gun control, their government health care that they're trying to push through in October. What does uh, Max Kaiser's spidey sense tell him? Well, um, uh, and, you know, I mean, I'm all about... The banking and finance systems, you know. I mean, that's what I cover. As far as the whole swine flu epidemic, you know, I'm an idiot because I go to the drugstore every day and I buy that um, stuff for your hands to disinfect my hands. Of course, I was laughing at those people a year ago. But, you know, it's a herd mentality. You know, how much do they, they charge $8 for, like, uh, uh, you know, a squirt of that stuff over here? Think of the profits that are being generated. And it's all herd mentality. People are like, I go to these uh, meat friends. And they're like sharing these things, uh, little antiseptic gel. I mean, it's pathetic. I mean, you know, you fall into the behavior that is uh, inculcated through this massive wave of uh, of scare tactics. Everything can be sold using scare tactics now. They figured that out. You know, shock and awe, uh, 9-11. If you scare enough people, they can scare you into buying anything now. Why bother coming up with a creative campaign to sell stuff when you just show people getting blown up? And then you'll sell a truckload of whatever it is you're trying to sell. You know, it's all it's all sales, salesmanship. It's like just basically, you know, uh, infomercials for psychosis and mass destruction. And they'll sell anything down the pike. But, um, you know, I want to talk about uh, Goldman Sachs for a second because it's just gotten so hilarious. It's gotten ridiculous. It's gotten absurd, if that's okay, by you. Yeah, let's get into $23.7 missing in 10 months. Uh, they're refusing to say where the money went. Paulson gets up before Congress last week and says, yeah, I took $200 million myself. That's not a conflict of money he gave himself. I mean, this is a new level of heist. Uh, you're an expert in all this. Break it down for us. And then I want to get into, they say the economy's fixed. Everything's wonderful. The stock market's going up. But housing at all-time low. Uh, Reuters reporting that half of U.S. mortgages seen underwater by 2011, um, record joblessness, all of that is degrading quickly, but they're meanwhile saying, Marie Antoinette, let them all eat birthday cake. Let's just talk about a couple of things here. One, I don't know if you saw this or not, the high-frequency trading scheme.
scandal. High frequency trading, which is now being talked about in Washington. That special little computer. Tell us about that. Yeah, this is really amazing. Now, just to give you an analogy here, if you go into a, if you saw somebody, your neighbor, and they had a rubber hose in your neighbor's gas tank, and he had that hose, and it was over a, a, a bucket, and he was stealing gas from your, you know, you would say, hey, buddy, you know, don't steal our neighbor's gas. That's not very nice. That's not very social behavior. He's siphoning off gas, right? Basically, uh, and it has, they don't even argue. They don't, they don't deny this. Goldman Sachs, over at 85 Broad Street, is where they have their headquarters down there on Wall Street. They co-located a server next to the New York Stock Exchange. And they use this high-frequency trading to siphon off, depending on whose estimates you read, between $100 million and $200 million a day. They're just siphoning cash directly off the floor of the exchange. And that's what we know of with a computer program plugged in secretly, uh, rigging the market. But that's okay because they're allowed to give themselves the bonus money while they're former executives of the Treasury SEC. They claim that they're, quote-unquote, adding liquidity to the system. So if you caught a guy siphoning gas from a car, and his defense was, no, I'm, I'm adding gas to the car. <laughs> so they say, hey, Goldman, you're siphoning money from the floor of the exchange using high-frequency trading, using all these proprietary algorithms, uh, which I know a lot about because I created the, the virtual specialist technology is used to trade bonds by uh, Cantor Fitzgerald on Wall Street. It's used by the Hollywood Stock Exchange to trade box office futures, and I designed these systems, so I know all about these systems. And it, basically, it's nothing more than siphoning off cash. And, and Barney Frank says, oh, uh, a little profiteering is okay. We need, we need the banks on Wall Street to have a little profiteering because, after all, if the banks aren't healthy, the economy's not healthy. So the entire economy, 23.7 trillion of our money that we have to pay interest to them on, oh, here's our money and we pay you interest to take our money, then it turns out the Fed is paying banks not to loan because they want to consolidate and blow out the economy. Is there no end? I mean, will, will uh, Geithner soon be barbecuing children on his lawn and we say, well, he's got to eat. The economy will collapse if we don't feed him. Uh, our children. In fact, let me ask you that question. Why is he in the Wall Street Journal and other pub papers screaming and cussing and yelling at Bernanke and freaking out? Are they scared of the uh, auditing the Fed? I mean, Bernanke suddenly on TV stuttering and bumbling. Uh, these omnipresent Mount Olympus elites are now coming and groveling. I mean, are we seeing the momentum shift uh, against their uh, criminal activity? upset because now that he works for the government, his slice of the bonus pool is smaller. He's trying oh. to get all of these guys to give him more money. He's upset. He can't sell his house in Larchmont, New York, which, by the way, his house in Larchmont is less than a mile than where I grew up in Westchester County. I used to ride my bicycle by his, his house all the time. He's upset he can't sell his house because of the economic problems that he himself helped create. And now that uh, Paulson successfully uh, ransomed the government for $700 billion, uh, which became $13 trillion. he's now paying himself. He's working with the Chinese to manage their money. He's going to make billions again. When he took the job for the government, of course, he said, well, I had to sell my Goldman Sachs st uh, stock at well, close to its all-time high. Uh, by the way, because I'm working for the government, I don't have to pay taxes on that gain. So his whole role as a, as a servant for the government was a tax dodge. Paulson was just a tax dodger. He, he uh, saved something like $100 million in taxes by taking that job, worked for a couple of years, engineered the collapse of Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns, took away all the competition from Goldman and J.P. Morgan and his crony buddies, and uh, got rid of his arch enemy, Dick Fold, over at Lehman Brothers. It was nothing but a grudge match between those two. They could have easily, Alex, this is the tragedy of it, going back to what I call the 9th of August, or 8-9, which is right up there with 9-11. Two years ago, on the 9th of August, two years ago in 2007, is when BNP in Paris said that the, uh, they couldn't value the subprime bonds on their books, and that started what we call the credit crash uh, for the next 24 months. The response from the government was not to reform the banking system, but to give them now what we know to be roughly $13 trillion, and according to guys like Carl Denninger, who's a very plugged-in guy, that number's going to double again. And the tragedy is that they could have very easily wiped out every mortgage debt and every credit card debt in America for less than that money. And well, yeah, right. I mean, uh, Bloomberg reported $9.4 would pay off all mortgages, not just bad mortgages, but 
you know, fifty million dollar palaces, hundred thousand dollar bungalows, everything paid off. But but now you're saying thirteen. Uh, the Congress and the banks are saying twenty three point seven. But I guess that's different types of money they created, and that's not counting all the magical SDRs and these other layers of global currency.